Amen. I'd like to welcome everyone to Christian Fellowship. Glad you're here with us this morning. I want to remind everyone that today is Family Sunday at Christian Fellowship. That means everyone above the age of nursery uh, should be here in the sanctuary with us for the service. We also want to remind you that coming up on Christmas Day, which is a Sunday this year, we're going to have one service at 10 o'clock. It'll, it'll last an, about an hour. It'll be a communion, some, wor some Christmas worship, uh, a short message from our pastor, and then uh, you'll be free to do whatever else you're going to do that day. But uh, if you can come, great. If you can't, we certainly understand. But we will be here, and we hope to see you. Uh, coming up the week after that, there's going to be a New Year's Eve worship night. I believe Brother Kenny's getting this together. He, he usually stands there as a big guy. He's over here directing. Hey, you want to say anything about it real quick? I can. Well, just real quick. Yeah, we're just going to have a community worship and prayer night. We'll just come 6 o'clock, and uh, for about 30 minutes we'll worship, and then we'll break out and just have some time of prayer. We'll have... Uh, list of our missionaries and uh just for the church and people that are sick and if you're a worshiper worshiper if you're an intercessor then have time to pray and just just come and just in, invite the lord and to see what he does amen Good. i appreciate you doing that kenny amen. so that's new year's eve um to give your tithe and offering today there's boxes up here on the stage there's some in the vestibule on the wall uh, you can go to christianfellowship.org and uh, give there, or you can text GIVE to 270-906-9658. Um, there's going to be a fundraiser next week. Is this you, Mariah? Is this fundraiser for you? It is? Come stand up here by me. <laughs> by the way, Davina Wallace, so good to see you. So good to see you. Good to see you too, Jeremy. <laughs> so anyway, next week you're going to be serving a meal. Uh, tell, tell them about it. Um, all I know is it's after church um, next Sunday. I'm not even sure what it is. Cook, are you cook, doing all the cooking? No. No, no I'm not. <laughs> but we're supposed to come eat, and we don't know if you can cook. You cannot cook. Oh my! Hey, right, but she can be a missionary, and that's what she's going to be doing starting in January, going to get training. So, anyway, next week a fellowship meal. Uh, it looks like it's ten dollars for adult, five dollars for a kid. Potato soup, it says. So that sounds good. So you can make potato soup. You didn't know it yet. Yep. All right. Well, support this young lady next week. She's awesome. She just really wanted to come up here, and so I made sure she got to come. All right. We've got an exciting morning plan. If you want to stand up, we're going to pray together. And I know we've got a, a baby dedication later that passed. Not a baby. A young kids dedication, uh, which is a great thing to do. I just encourage you. I mean, we're doing this today for the halters, but if you have never... Uh, come before your church family and dedicated your kids to God and dedicated yourself to God to raise them the way you're supposed to, it's not too late. If they're living at your house, it's not too late. So I encourage you to do it. Do it. It's, we, we pray over you and we just speak a blessing over you, and it's a great thing. And uh, so I just, I, nobody told me to say that. I just felt like I should, so, which is how I got in this predicament. All right, well, lots of folks to pray for. Uh, be especially in prayer for Linda Holman. Uh, she, you know, she had bypass surgery on Friday. That's a long recovery, and she just really needs a touch from God. And also for Miss Marcella, she's going to have to have a procedure this week. Yeah, for Mar Marcella Perkins, going to have a little heart procedure this week. Be praying for her and uh, lots of other folks. So let's pray together. God, you're so, so good to us. We thank you for the Lord Jesus, for his sacrifice, for his obedience. And right now, Lord God, we lift up uh, the folks in our church family, God, that uh, need a touch from you, Lord God. We lift up Miss Linda and Miss Marcella. We ask you to touch their hearts and strengthen their hearts. 
and give them speedy recoveries. God bless them with your favor. Continue to touch uh, uh, Sherry Smith and Bill Smith, Lord God. Heal them. Raise them up. Do a miracle in their life, Father God, for Jim Clendenin. So good to see him today. Continue to touch him and give him strength. For Frida Rowley, uh, has uh, chemo tomorrow and uh, some tests this week. God, we pray for good reports that says she's healed in Jesus' name. God, we ask you to complete every good work you've begun in her life. In Jesus' name, we thank you for that. Uh, for Patty Parrish, Father God, for Keena Van Pell, God, touch and heal them. In Jesus' name, we thank you for that. For uh, Holland York, God, strengthen his heart. In Jesus' name, Ezra Cox, continue to uh, complete the healing you've begun in him. Uh, for Carolyn Pascal, Lord God, just touch her heart. Father God, give her good reports. And we just speak a miracle of healing over her, Father, in Jesus' name. Uh, for Kathy Muller, Lord God, she needs a miracle from you. And God, we just thank you right now in Jesus' name for healing her, Father. Thank you. For Mark Biven, continue to touch him. For Scarlet Faith, Father God, I just pray for Ronnie and Carolyn's daughter, God, touch and heal her in Jesus' name. Give her good reports and just bless her with your favor. Strengthen her faith, Father. We thank you for that. Uh, for Chastity Corbett, God, help her to get to come home from the hospital. Continue to touch Elaine Biv and help her to recover from her surgery. Uh, for Dee Williams, who's going to be traveling this week, just protect her and be with her. Bring her home safely, Father. For Jerry Clark, continue to touch her. And uh, we thank you for that, Lord God. Right now, we just lift our hands. We say, welcome, Holy Spirit. Have your way in our hearts and our lives today. God, I just pray in Jesus' name as we worship that Jesus will be magnified and our hearts will be drawn to you. And we thank you for it. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give it all to the Lord this morning.
we do, Lord, we love you, Jesus. Come on, just begin to say, I love you, Lord. I love you, Jesus. You're everything. You're everything. Hallelujah. You're everything. Bless your name, Jesus. In his presence, so sweet. We can rest in his presence this morning. Just to take a deep breath and just rest in his presence. Take a deep breath and just rest in God's presence. He's got you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. We thank you, Lord, for the breath of life. We thank you, God, that you are our everything. God sent his son.
you're good. Guys, if you would come on up, those that are going to help us serve communion, it's the first Sunday of the month. Here at Christian Fellowship, we practice open communion. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, we invite and encourage you to join us. There'll be someone standing in front of your respective sections. And as they're there, we'll just exit row by row from the front to the back. And we'll all receive together after everybody's gotten the bread and the wine. All right, let's worship. Go ahead, guys, if you're on the front row.
hallelujah we bless you loves us. 1 John chapter 3 verse 1 reads this way. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called the children of God. And so we are. I want to stop there for just a second. Guys, we're, we're not just servants. We are servants of God, but we're more than that. He has counted us sons and daughters, his very children. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. But beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is. That verse has been speaking to me this morning. We shall see him as he is. Kenny's been singing about the presence of the Lord this morning and right now we know that God is here where two or three are gathered. He's right there in the midst. We know that he takes up residence on the inside of us, the Holy Spirit, once we accept the Lord as our Savior. But I'm not just talking about a tangible feeling. I'm not just talking about a, a, an assurance of knowing that he's here. I'm talking about seeing him with our own eyes. There's a day coming when we shall behold him. Whew. And in all of his glory, getting to behold the presence of the Lord, not just from afar, but with our own physical eyes, seeing Jesus Christ. Man, all of these things, us being counted children and us beholding him, can all happen because of one thing and it's the blood of Jesus that paved the way for us you're a child of God because Jesus has grafted you into the vine you have eternal life and the promise of beholding him because the blood of Jesus paved the way that we could experience that so what we're partaking in this morning is not just a random thing that's done. It is a celebration of what Jesus has done and purchased for us. Can we pray for a moment? Lord, we thank you. Jesus, you've done it. You've counted us children. You've grafted us in. You have made those that was far off from you. You've brought them into the family of God. You've brought us into the family of God and we are children. How because of the love that the Father had for us. It's what the Word just says that we read. Oh, what manner of love the Father has loved us. Lord, and I thank you that we have that love and that assurance now. But Lord, we give you praise that in one day, coming soon, we shall behold you. Whew. Lord, our spirits are expectant and excited about that moment. Lord, it's the culmination of all of history into that one moment when we behold you as you are. And Jesus paved the way. The Bible says on the night he was betrayed, he took bread and after he broke it, he gave thanks and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in like manner, he took the cup. After giving thanks, he said, this cup is the new covenant of my blood. Do it as often as you eat it. Lord, I just want to say thank you once again for the blood of Jesus. Thank you for your blood that was shed for us on Calvary. Lord, we 
receive this morning with grateful hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, as you're seated this morning, turn around and love on somebody and tell them you're glad to see them here. Joy, Clee. Worshiping, I just, and I don't know what to do with this, so here it is, but I got two things that one is, and I, and I don't know if it's for, for you or maybe for someone who's listening via Facebook, but I got this, this heaviness that there's somebody carrying such heaviness that you just don't even feel like you want to go further. You feel like this is the season we're all supposed to be happy and joyful and excited, and you're not. And you don't maybe don't always understand why, but there's such a spirit of heaviness that's coming with you, and, and I have good news for you because he lives. Amen. We can face tomorrow. It may, not be, it may not be great. We may have to walk through the valley. We may have to walk through whatever it is. But he's got us. He's got you. Amen. He's got you. He loves you. He wants to wrap his arms around yes, you. Yes, he does. And he wants to pull you it's close. Good, Renee. And the other one is worthy. There's some that just don't feel worthy. And even when we took communion... You were kind of sheepish about it. Or at home, you thought, I can't do that because I'm not worthy. I'm not Thank good you, enough. But that's not the truth. Well, he's counted you are story. good enough because of him. Amen. Not because of you. Not because of me. Because I blew it this week. I blow it every day. But because of Jesus and the blood that he shed for you. Amen. And his body that was broken for you and the love that he has for you. You can be worthy. Walk in it. Don't look at yourself, your mistakes, your failures, your past. Look at him. Jesus. Let that load of heaviness just be lifted from you. Yes, Lord. And accept you are worthy. That's good. That's a great word, Renee. Amen. Amen. Guys, we're going to start this morning with a baby dedication. And I'm going to ask the Halter family coming up to come up this morning uh, this has been a little bit coming. She wanted a time when the whole family could be here. And I certainly understand that. And we're just honored this morning to dedicate Piper and Jalen. We're just so excited. God is good. When a tribe increases, it's to be celebrated. We always read this verse at a baby dedication. Yeah, come on up here with me, Jen. We love this family. They mean so much to us and to this church, and they serve in various capacities and have been so faithful in this church. And we're just honored to see these two young additions added to this family. God is just faithful. The Bible says, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It's vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives to his beloved sleep. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, and the fruit of the womb a reward. And I can't turn the page. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. Guys, the quiver's getting more full. And you guys feel the weight and the burden of responsibility for that heavy quiver too. But uh, we just love you guys. We want you to know, I, man, I'm just grateful for each of you. Church, would you stretch out your hands this morning as we pray over this family? And I'm going to actually ask my wife to pray. Put her on the spot. I might pay a price later, but she'll forgive me because we're in church at Sunday. So <laughs> would you pray for us? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for family. 
Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the gift of adoption. Lord, I just thank you so much for the family that is up here. And Lord, they are dedicating themselves to raising their children in the nurturing and admonition of the Lord. And Lord, we just pray that you will give them the strength when they're tired. Yes, Lord. Lord. they'll give them the joy when they need your strength. Yes, Lord, Jesus. you will anoint them. You, are, you will empower them to be the a parents that you have called them to be for their children. Lord, we dedicate Piper and we dedicate Jalen to you. And we say, Lord Jesus, help us, Lord. Help us to uh, help them raise these girls to love you with all of mm -hmm. their heart. Yes, Lord. Lord, help us to be an encouragement to them and help them. Lord, just to, Lord, come and be their guest in their home. Be your, be their guest. Lord, be in their home. And Lord, help them to continually, Lord, just look to you for guidance. Look to you to for strength. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Ronnie, come on, brother. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Both of the girls were amening as Ronnie was talking. They looked at me and said, amen. And I'm like, that's, that's good. That's a good word from the Lord. Praise God. Give the Lord a round of applause. You guys can have your seats this morning. We celebrate you. God is so faithful. Always good to have an amen corner. Thank you. Here it is. Ah, oh, praise the Lord. It's so good to be here today. I want to borrow some words from Tom Cochran this morning. Life is a highway. And I want to ride it all night long. There's one thing we do when we go on the highway. We want to go fast. There's, see, the amens are increasing. Nothing irritates us more than if we're not allowed to go fast. Some of you don't care. We think you're weird. No, we don't. Just don't be on the road when we are. But I also want to borrow some words from the great poets, Paul Simon and Art Garfunkel. Slow down, you move too fast. You got to make the morning last just kicking down the cobblestone. Looking for fun and feeling. Say, we got some people in here that know. There comes a time in life that we need to embrace the moment. We don't need to drive past it. We don't need to speed things up. We don't need to move on to our next meeting or our next engagement or event. We're not spinning our wheels here, doing this, checking this off our box today, and then moving on to the next thing, although life feels that way a lot, does it not? It's a busy time. It's a busy culture and I would say that this time of year is the busiest of all. It's my favorite time of year, but it's also the busiest time of year. I call this the gauntlet from Thanksgiving to Christmas. 
it's rare, and, and actually this night we've inten- or this season we've intentionally slowed down a little bit. But you know, most of the time in December, and you can totally relate to this. We don't even have a night at home in December. It's just go, 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 go. And that's not always good. As a matter of fact, I want to borrow words from someone else this morning. Just enjoy this. It's just going to take a few minutes, but it's worth our time, okay?
following along with me. Dr. Breen said it in some ways that I wanted to borrow his words this morning. And uh, hopefully some of you won't do what Gomer and uh, Barney did as well. If you watch the rest of that episode, it's one of my favorites, actually. Does anybody actually remember that episode? I'm a big Andy fan. Yeah, I know I'm in the right crowd. Uh, They spend the rest of the day just running around trying to pull something off and doing the exact opposite of what the pastor had said and admonished them to do. Life is busy. It's what we do. And we miss what's truly important. And if you want to kind of have a great example that we all just walked through, Thanksgiving. How many people you hosted Thanksgiving this year at your house? Okay, we we went to the Haynes house this year for Thanksgiving. It is a busy thing pulling that off. Um, You cook, you clean, you prepare, you get chairs and tables, you set everything up nicely, you get out the dessert table, you do all of this trying to pull it off, and we have a little family text message, Uh, this one's going to bring this one, this one's going to bring this one, and uh, we're talking about the time to arrive, some of us are notoriously late, that's not us, we're always there early, Uh, but I I told Brandy, what time do you want us there, and she said, well, uh, you know, you can get there at any time, but we're going to eat at noon, and um, and I said, well, we'll be there, you know, early that morning. She said, good, you can help us cook and clean. And I'm like, okay, so that's, that's it. it. It takes a lot to get through that. And then when it's over, it's like it's gone just like that. And most of the times we, we don't even take a second to enjoy what all that work was for. Has anybody else been guilty of that? You spin your wheels going, 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 and then it's over and you're exhausted And you didn't even take a moment to value what you were doing all that work for. And then you think it's over, and then they rush into the whirlwind of the Christmas season. The very next day is the most stressful day of the year for a lot of people. Some of you absolutely love it. Out all night, pushing, shoving, throwing punches at people to save a few bucks. Awkward laughs from the church crowd this morning out on Black Friday. I'll tell you, I'm not that guy. I'll pay you money to stay home. I don't want to be around people on that day, but I appreciate those that are go-getters. And then for you traditionalists that join the rest of us, you hurry up and put up the tree. You don't do that till the day after Thanksgiving. That's okay. Everybody has their traditions. That's okay, but it's just another added stress of the day. Then you got to get the house ready. you got to decorate you got to send out your Christmas card. Some of you are like feverishly trying to get everyone's addresses. I made some calls this week to get some addresses of people. Then you got to make out your Christmas shopping list. Some of you are done. Some of you have been done with that for months. And I value the people that you buy gifts throughout the course of the year, and you don't have that stress. Does anybody do that in this room? Yeah, you're you're smart. But some of us, we we just pack it all in. we got to go, 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 go. Go and check this one off, check this one off. And then that's followed by the holiday itself, making sure everyone has everything. And we always host Christmas lunch at our house, which, by the way, many of you have been asking, Christmas falls on Sunday this year. What are we going to do? Well, it's a perfect time to talk about it. We're going to have church. And we're going to have church at 10 a.m. that morning. There's not a time that's going to be convenient for everybody's family. I know you have traditions, uh, and that's okay. But we're going to open up the church for about an hour-long service at 10 a.m. The gathering will be joining us. We're going to have communion, worship, and a brief sermonette, I promise you, brief. And then we'll go about our families. It would be an injustice to not celebrate Jesus on that day. So we're going to be here at 10 a.m., and it'll be a brief service so we can make plans accordingly and then we go and then you got to assign the task for everyone to do for Christmas and then it's over just as quickly as it came how do we stop and breathe it in how do we get off of the roller coaster of madness of the highway that we drive so fast through that we call life the real meaning of life is passing us by while we walk through it. And I know, uh, because I'm possibly the guiltiest one in the room, I, 
I know as you hear this, you're like, that's so hard. I know I need to do better at this, but I struggle. Let me give you a, a great practical example. I, I look at my son here, who he is 18 years old. I, I missed so much of his childhood being busy. Uh, I missed moments. And, and honestly, as I look at him, I think of a lot of the failures that I had as a dad. Not embracing the moment that you're in. Guys, God has called us to embrace every single moment and live life to the fullest. How many people remember when your kiddos were so small you held them in your hand and all they did was cry and eat and poop and sleep and then start the whole process all over again? And you're just there. And that was such a great stage and I loved it, but the truth is I was waiting for the next stage. I was wanting to drive through that stage so he could walk, you know, and then I don't have to carry him everywhere. I enjoyed that, but I, I can't wait till he walks. And I remember saying things like that. I can't wait till he walks. Little did I know when he started walking, he would never want to be held again. He just went and he went and he went and he went. I miss those days. And then when he was walking, I, I remember thinking, well, I can't wait till he talks. I, I can't wait until he says, I love you, Dad. Ah, it was, it was what I was longing for. And then he started talking, and when he was talking, I thought, I can't wait till we start playing catch together. I, I can't wait till we do this. Always looking forward, never really being in the moment that I was in because I was so busy waiting for the next thing. I'm sorry, son. God's given me another chance. I'm going to do better this time. I'm going to do better embracing the moments he's put in me. And I'm so grateful for that. Friday is a unique day. And I know, boy, that you get irritated with me sometimes. We don't have school at Friday on Christian Fellowship, and kids love that. Every Friday, I like to wait. It's my day to watch Liam, and Trey likes to sleep in on his day off. I always wake him up. And I said, let's go to breakfast together, just the three of us. We went to Hutchins this week. Me and Trey ate, and we were throwing food in Liam's mouth. We, we do that every week. And I go up there, and I knock on the door, and I'm secretly hoping that he's waiting, you know, waiting waiting for him, but he's always asleep. And I'm like, ah, should I let him sleep? Nah, it's okay. And then he's like, I'm just going to sleep. And then in about 15 minutes, I get the text message. Okay, I'm up. I can't get back to sleep. Let's go to breakfast. I'm trying to do better being in the moment. In Luke chapter 10, we see a strange encounter. Because the truth is, we do this not only in life. I don't want to just talk about life advice. I want to get to the Word of God this morning. We do the same thing serving the Lord. Sunday is our event. It takes a lot to pull off a service. And you got to have people positioned in security. you got to have the greeters you got to have somebody with the coffee bar. you got to have the sound, and it's not just the sound. you got to have the, the computer person doing the words, and they got to be right on point with everybody. Then you got to have the video person. you got to have the nursery people. you got to have the stage security. you got to have the worship team in all the little positions. you got to have Scott who will do the announcements. you got to have each little thing, and we're spinning our wheels, making sure every little thing is going on so we can pull it off, pull off the event. Meanwhile, what's it really about? It's about Jesus. At the end of the day, none of those things matter a hill of beans. What matters is time at the feet of Jesus. I, I want to tell you guys, it doesn't matter what else happens in our service today. If we just sat here and told testimonies about how great Jesus is, if we just sat here in a cappella, I had the sound room come down and sit with their families. I had the nursery people come out, and moms are like, please don't do that. No, no, no. 
had the babies come out and had the security team come in and even our officer Hal this morning come in and join us and everybody just sit and us do nothing but a cappella sing, He is Lord, He is Lord. He has risen from the dead and He is Lord. At the end of the day, Jesus is what everything is about. How we miss that in life, going and going and going. Not just missing families and things and events. I'm talking about our spiritual lives. Missing the mark because it's all for the name and the fame of Jesus. Now, don't misunderstand me. I certainly appreciate every servant of this house because you're needed and you're valued and you're necessary and you do it with a willing and grateful heart. But I want to encourage us this morning to not lose sight of what it's about. See, there's an event that's going on in Luke chapter 10. Much like what I tried to describe to you with our Thanksgiving gathering or Christmas gathering. It's a unique gathering. Ladies, I want to talk to you for a second. I want you to imagine as you're pulling the event off at your house, you got a special guest coming to Christmas lunch this year. And all of your family's going to be there, but there's a special guest that said he's coming. And the person that's going to be dining at your table is the Son of God himself, Jesus Christ. What a thought. You know, paper plates wouldn't do for him. He would never complain about that, but we'd have to dust off the china that's never been used in the 22 years we've been married. And I'm just joking, we've used it. But it it would be the best that we have to offer. I don't know why anybody would try to make these anyway, but it's not a day for instant mashed potatoes. You better get the potato peeler out. The best, butter. You you need the good stuff because Jesus is at the table. It's not enough, guys, to just throw everything into that room that everybody knows you have that looks like uh, Sanford and Son's yard. Everything's just thrown in there, but the rest of the house that people see looks... No, you need to clean that room. You, You would dust the things that have never been dusted. You would vacuum the areas that have never been vacuumed. Every window would be spotless because Jesus is coming. I gotta clean this. I gotta make this. I know this is his favorite. (laughs) Because Jesus is coming. What a thought. Life is like that, and that's what we see here in verse 38 of Luke chapter 10. As they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. So you see this lady, and you're about to meet her sister as well, and they're they're different. They're the same, but they're different. Martha is embracing the moment. She's trying to pull the service off. She's seeing all the things that need to be done. I value those people, by the way. And and if you're going to start jumping ahead in your thoughts, I want you to know I value Martha. This is not an anti-Martha sermon because there are plenty of Marthas in this church, and I value you. I don't even have to say your names. You know who you are. The rest of us know who you are. If something needs done, you're the one out there doing it. And I know that. But Martha has invited Jesus into her house And she had a sister named Mary. So Martha is doing this. She's she's making the homemade mashed potatoes. She has peeled so many of those things. She has cooked and cleaned. She didn't even sleep the night before. She was doing it all. Just worked herself down. She was the chief, what do they call it at, at the house? Chief bottle washer. Cook and bottle washer, that's it. That's she was doing it all. Now, we all have these people in our lives. While you're doing that, what irritates you more 
than somebody that won't help you. Now, we dare not say it in church, but your family, you can get away with it. We're having Christmas. If somebody shows up empty-handed, they're going to hear about it. You mean you just came here to eat? We've been cooking and cleaning. Would you do something? Does anybody feel bold enough to talk to your family that way? No one. Sure you do. Renee lifted her hand. Uh, (laughs) Some of you feel that boldness. And Martha is working, and Jesus has shown up, and everything's not done yet. There's still stuff that has to be done. The rolls have to be put in the oven and the little pat of butter put on top of it and the rolls are still in the package. And she's looking at Mary like, get the rolls, Jesus is hungry. Would you please? But Mary won't lift her finger. Jesus has come in and the Bible says this, as Martha's doing these things, Mary is sitting at the Lord's feet and listening to his teaching. Martha's cooking, she's serving, she's doing it all, watching the china. The drinks have not had the ice put in the cup yet, and she's like, Mary, can you please? Mary doesn't even pay any attention to her whatsoever. What does Martha do? Well, verse 40 says, she was distracted with much serving, And she went up to Jesus. This is a hot woman. I don't mean it in that way. She's angry. (laughs) She she is angry, my friend. That's the meaning of the word that I'm trying to use this morning. She's upset. So much so, don't you appreciate those people When they are in it, they invite everybody else in the room into their argument with you. No, I don't like that either, Rick. Martha is steaming so much, she can't even, it's not going to bring Jesus into this. Mary is such a lazy bag of bones. Oh, I am going to kill her when he leaves. She has no idea that she's going to get it, and I'm the one that's going to give it to her. I'm telling you, it is coming. Mary's cruising for a bruising, and she's walking by like, (sighs) hey, Jesus. (sighs) It's so relatable, isn't it? It gets to the point that she can no longer keep her peace. She's not only whispering to Mary, (laughs) she's up to Jesus. And listen to her words. She says, Lord, don't you even care? Do do you see what's going on here? How many gold stars do you have in your pocket? Because I'd like them all. Mary gets none this morning. Jesus, don't you even see? Please, don't you care that my sister has left me by myself to serve? Tell her to help me. As this was not said in a whisper, this is an angry woman. Would you please tell Mary to get up off of the ground and help me? We are never going to eat if she doesn't get up. This is an upset woman. What happens? Jesus looks and can't you see the the grin on his face? It's like, well, what am I going to do here? (laughs) I I can see Jesus' fear and trepidation of stepping into a hornet's nest here, you know. Like, what what am I going to respond to this woman? And then he looks at Mary, captivated by the fact that Jesus is there. He's looking at Martha, sweating, angry. And he looks down at Mary, with this big smile on her face, embracing the moment that she's in. It's a moment she wouldn't have that many more times before Jesus went to glory. She was fully there, recognizing who was in her house. And Jesus looks at Martha, and he says her name, 
He says, Martha, and he repeats her name. Martha, Martha. He says, you are so anxious and troubled about many things. I, I want to tell you, it, it doesn't matter if the ice melts in my cup. Martha, it, it doesn't matter to me if we eat on paper plates. It, it, it doesn't matter to me, Martha. You can serve me the cardboard instant mashed potatoes. Those are not potatoes, but I'll eat those. I, I, I don't want, I don't, that's not what I'm looking for here. You're so worried about all of the things that at the end of the day, it simply doesn't matter. You're anxious, you're distracted, you're troubled. He says there's one thing that's necessary. And he says, Mary got it. She's chosen the good portion which will not be taken away from her. What moment they're in, Martha has worked and served and slaved over that kitchen and all the details. And Mary just wanders in and sits at his feet and gazes in his eyes. And Martha calls it laziness. Martha misinterprets what Mary's doing as laziness, but she was just so captivated with the person of Jesus. In the busyness of life, guys, I want to tell you, follow me as we start to our descent this morning in this sermon. We must get back to the place where we are captivated with the person of Jesus Christ. A couple thousand years later, I want to tell you, that has not changed. That is still what it's about. The petty things that we think are of value and importance pale in comparison to the presence of Jesus Christ. Now, do we see him with our eyes? No, but it's no less true that he's here this morning and he wants to commune with us. I think of the Kent Henry song. I'm kind of in a singing mood this morning. When I look into your holiness, when I gaze into your loveliness, when the things that surround become shadows in the light of you, when I found the joy of reaching your heart, when my will becomes enthroned in your love, when all things that surround become shadows in the light of you, I worship you. I worship you. The reason I live is to worship you. I worship you, I worship you, the reason I live. Jesus' threefold response to Martha are the three points that I want to talk about this morning. Everything else has been an introduction to what I really want to say. The first thing is this, and as we talk about this, I want to encourage you as a family, or if you're here by yourself this morning, do a genuine checking of your own spirit. But as a family, if you came with somebody, I don't think I've ever asked anybody to do this. I want you, as you eat, as you leave in the car, to talk about this as a family. How are we doing at this? And how can we do better? It needs to be done, guys, because we are so overly busy that we are so infected with Martha syndrome that we're missing the moments that Jesus has given us. 
the first one is this. You are troubled about many things. <laughs> Can I tell you that most of the things that I worry about, that I give my mental focus and attention to, they don't matter at all. The things that stress me out, that raise my blood pressure, have zero relevance on eternity whatsoever. Guys, things just don't matter at the level that we think they do. Well, the paper towels are out in the women's bathroom this morning. Okay, we'll get some more. At the end of the day, your hands will still dry. I think there's paper towels back there, by the way. The wreath fell down. Somebody better get that. It will be put back. It's okay. Those lights, they didn't twinkle. I know, thanks for noticing, Art. Look at those trees. They're just, there's no twinkle in them this morning. Guess what? It's okay. The kids' workers didn't show up. It's okay. Our kids are going to live, believe it or not. The coffee was not hot at all this morning. It'll be okay. They didn't sing one song that I liked. It's okay. If we would only... We are anxious and troubled about many things. Some of you right now, your minds are already thinking about the things you have to do after service, the things that your week's going to look like. You got your list you're making. I do that too. And those things have to be done. One, because I'm getting more forgetful the older I get. I got to write stuff down. I get that. But may we learn how to get back into the moments that we're in, especially this time, guys. I want to encourage you with your church attendance. When you come to church, please don't let that be a spiritual thing. You check off the box. Okay, I did this. Now let's go do this. May we enter these doors with an expectation of encountering the presence of the Son of God Amen. and His precious Holy Spirit. And may we get lost in that moment where we take our watches off. It doesn't matter. Jesus is here. When you wake up every morning, may your thoughts not go to, I got to do this, 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 this day's going to be crazy. May we open the word and say, come Holy Spirit. And may we get lost in that moment where nothing else matters. When we start singing to the Lord. Even in corporate worship, may we not think, okay, we always do four songs. This is the third one. We got one more. And then I can sit down. May we get to the place that our heart cries, Lord, I want to spend the rest of this day bestowing love on your name. We lose the moments because we're distracted. Well, the pastor didn't even mention this, and this is really important to me. It's not even about the pastor. May we get our eyes on Jesus. Guys, that is what is truly important. Our local radio owner right here, Rick and Renee, the moments that you're on the air, it's not even about getting through a broadcast. It's about pointing people to Jesus. Nothing else matters. That's all. Give me my watch back. You can wear it. It's all about Jesus. And Jesus calls Martha on it. Now the truth is, you like Martha and like me, no one likes being called out on that. Do you? No. It doesn't matter. Jesus is here.
The first thing that he says is, you are troubled about many things. He puts his finger on the heart of the issue. And then, this is really hard. No one likes to hear that they are wrong. I mean, I could have a conversation with you, and you could be pouring your heart out about something you're passionate about if my response is, nope, you're wrong in everything you just said. (sighs) How dare you? No one likes to be told they're wrong. But do you know that's exactly what Jesus does? He says, Martha, uh, I'm just going to give you, you failed this test. Mary passed it with flying colors. The very thing that you're arguing about, she's chosen the good portion. I appreciate your hard work. I'm not devaluing that, but she gets the pass. You are the one who missed it. You are wrong. What do you get out of that? I can tell you what I get. There is never one moment wasted at the feet of Jesus. Not one. You can miss your next meeting tomorrow. You can miss what you think is the most important deal of a lifetime. You can miss this, 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 this. But if we're missing the feet of Jesus, we're missing everything. Everything else can line up perfectly. If we're missing this, we are missing life. You're troubled about many things. And the second thing that he tells tells her is, you're wrong. She's right. She's chosen the good portion, the necessary thing. It's the only thing that matters. And the third point that I want to make this morning is this. Not only has she chosen the good portion, it will never be taken from her. The things of eternal value is what's really done in the secret place with the Lord. Man, I just opened my heart this morning and show you the window to my soul. There's a lot of stresses, that even this week that I've carried, but I, I can tell you this. Every single time I enter his presence, everything changes. It changes just like that. Man, when you jump into that moment, it's like, Lord, here, it gives us our very sustenance, the grace that carries us through the rest of the moments. There's not a wasted moment at his feet. Well, I don't have the time to do that. No, the truth is we are not making time to do that. I know this is a condemning sounding remark. Well, you have time to do that. I don't. No, here's the truth, and I say this all the time, and it's offensive, but it's true. People do what they want to do. If someone's not doing something, they can give you an excuse. At the end of the day, it's because they don't want to. Oh, that's not me. That's them. That's not me. I, I want to be. No, you don't do this because you don't want to do You don't prioritize that. I've got something else that I think is more important than this, so I'm not going to do Guys, I've played those excuses myself. I want to tell you, we must prioritize the presence again. Prioritize the presence of God. I don't even want to have a worship service. I want to have a presence encounter with the Lord. I don't care about singing songs. I want to encounter the presence. I don't want to have a church service. I want to have an encounter with an almighty God. That's why I come here. I want to encounter the presence. The wheels and the the little plates were spinning. Every one of them can fall to the ground. If Jesus is in the room, that's all that matters. We must get back to that. But we're so just deeply drowning in plate spinning. God, this one's going to drop. This one's going to drop. This one's going to Okay. Aren't you thankful I didn't set them up and actually try that this morning? Why? Things have to be done. Martha's are so valuable to the kingdom. Guys, let's not misunderstand this. He's not saying, Martha, you're not needed. No. 
Everybody has different gifts they bring and they serve. But even in the gifts we bring, it's about Jesus. Even preaching a sermon, ministry is the worst at this. Well, you're a professional Christian. You got time to do that. It is so easy to forget the Lord of the work as you're doing the work of the Lord. It is so easy to not remind yourself, Jesus, it's for you. Every bit of it's for you, God. It's not about a sermon or a great communication. or It's for you, God. Lord, everything is for you. It's for your glory. God, may we get back to that place. Whatever area we serve and we do our gifts and we're Martha's and we love it, may we never forget every bit of it's for him. And I want to tell you, he's so worth it. Little did they know, moments like that were about to be gone. And they aren't ever coming back in this fashion. Yeah, they'll have the gift of the Holy Spirit and the abiding presence. But the physical person of Jesus was about to go to a cross. And they were in a moment that could never be recaptured. May we never lose sight of that. If it be with our families... Guys, I'm telling you, there have been a lot of empty seats at our family gatherings over the last couple of years. Spinning wheels trying to pull it off. Embrace every moment. You don't know how many more of those moments you will have. Embrace them. Man, I give everything I have for one more moment. Just one. At the end of the day, Jesus is all that matters. I know we're in a busy season. I know you're busier than I am. You're going, going, going. But this is a lesson for us this morning. May we slow down. We move too fast. And we're missing what it's truly about. Jesus, would you come even now? Just manifest your presence, Lord. Lord, I want to say I have no agenda but you. You are it. I don't care, Lord, about anything else. We want to give you our best, but we don't want to miss the moments with you. And we have been. And thank God for his mercy and his grace. Thank God for his loving rebuke and his discipline in our lives. It's for our best. Jesus, we open up our calendars to you. Lord, we say that you're the Lord of our life all the time. I'm making this declaration this morning. You are the Lord of my schedule. You're the Lord of my calendar, of my appointments. You're the Lord of my minutes in my day. Lord, I want to give you the best. I want to drink in every moment in your presence, Lord, because that's what it's about until the day where we behold you and see you as you are. May we drink in every moment of your presence now. And the rest of life, may we apply that principle in every other area, if it's family or whatever it is. Help us to slow down. Help us to take a chill pill. We give you our lives, Lord. 
We give you our lives. We don't want to rush out of your presence, Lord. Yeah, I know you live on the inside of us. We carry you wherever we go. But may we stop and be cognizant of what you've invited us into. It's all for you, Lord. If I teach a discipleship group, it's for you. If I teach a class, it's for you. If I lead a Bible study, it's for you. If I lead a song, if I lead worship, it's for you. If I watch kids, Lord, it's for you. If I stand my post on the wall in security, it's for you. Lord, if I greet people as they come into the church house, it's for you. Lord, if I serve coffee to your people, it's for you. And you said that even a cup of cold water given in your name, Lord, that reward will not be lost. May we embrace every opportunity you've given us. Yes, to serve but to serve with purpose, to serve with intentionality, keeping Jesus enthroned and in the center of it all. Lord, we repent because I can't speak for everybody else. I am Martha, and I'm guilty, Lord. I love to serve you with the gifts you've given me, Lord. But help us to pause and realize what the serving is even about. Help us, Lord. May Jesus be the center of it all. Kenny, would you come up to the keyboard, man? I'm going to invite you up this morning. I, I would like everyone to stand to your feet and just briefly come to this altar with me. Before we leave on the busy day, we're just going to take a moment and worship Jesus. Thanks, bro. I promise we won't tarry long, but it's worth our time. Let's just lift our hands to the Lord. Let's surrender to Him.
writing our agendas this morning, Lord, and the reprioritization of our lives. Yes, Jesus. Yes. We give you our time. Yes, Jesus. We give you our calendar. We give you our schedules, yes. Lord. Yes. We give you our focus. We yes. give you our Jesus. heart. We give you our passion. We give you our yes. gaze, Lord. We give you everything that we are, Lord Jesus. And I thank you, Father. Yes for your presence that never gives up on us and your willingness to reveal yourself to us, Lord, over and over again. And I thank you for it, God. Grab that microphone right there. Thank you, Jesus. Guys, I want to share a few things. Um, this is a convicting message for us all. And before anything else, I just want to um, be humble and tell you guys that, like, my phone, a distraction and I'll say this while I'm on it I read Jesus things <laughs> I read your Jesus things um, I read prophetic words I follow tons of pastors that is literally what I'm doing when I'm on my phone but I'm missing <laughs> conversations with Tyler and I'm missing um, looking my kids eye to eye and I've already got one moving and get ready to move on. I'm not going to get those back. So I wanted to just confess that. I think we all probably do that to an extent. I don't want to do that anymore. It's like a true addiction. It's like feels some, we think it's going to fill some void. I don't know what it does. But I also want to tell you guys something. You know, I do th some things well and I do some things not well that I've had to do in my own life that has absolutely crushed me. And you guys, and I've talked to my family about it, but you know, we're a sports family. And um, I work a lot, you know, at the salon during the day. And um, last year, the Lord told me, he was like, if you wanna be in my presence and be able to get at my feet, you're going to have to tell your family, no, you can't be there, Lindsay, and still be in my presence all the time. You can be there some, and but you can't. He said, you have to block out this time. And so last year, I actually, I talked, I said, Tyler was like, it's fine. You don't have to be there, you know, all the time. And now my kids are playing and I just go when I can. But I had to go to them one at a time and say, I'm not there because I don't care. And I'm not there because I don't love what you love. But I'm not there all the time because I don't sit at his feet. I'm going to totally fall apart. So true. And I have nothing to give you at all if I don't block out time for this. I just had to tell him and it's not that I don't care. So... I just wanted to share that openly because I've worried. I'm like, what's everybody going to think? They're going to think we're just, you know, I don't care. Tyler's there. You know, I have to be in his presence. I have to because I'm, I will die on the inside if I don't. Like, I have to carve it out. And so I wanted to share kind of um, two sides of what I walked through. But the third thing the Lord told me to share with you now is to just pray the boldness to say no. Yeah, that's true. The word no is so hard for us to say because, well, because it affects someone else. But sometimes when you say no, and it's a Jesus no, 
it gives them the courage to do that in their own life as well. So I'm just going to be obedient. And it's okay if I just pray. Yeah, sure. Pray. So, Father, I just um, thank you for pointing out things in my life that need to be changed and, and giving me the courage, God, to say no when I just have to choose you first. Even when it comes to those that I just I love the most, it's hard, God. But your word says you're first. And Father, I want that for me. I want that for my family. And I want that for this entire church body, God, the church global that we just learn to prioritize. So Father, I just ask for the boldness that families come together and, and decide together what, what's most important. Yes. And God, you just give us the um, boldness because time, God, you're coming back. Yeah. And our priorities have to be straight, and you're going to honor those straight priorities. Yes, you're going to move through that. Yes. Lord, help us just make that space right now, God. And Lord, you reveal to me and all of us where we're wrong, where we're in error, God. And just give me personally the boldness and the strength to just set my phone down, break that addiction off of me right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Break it, God, and help me be disciplined. Give me discipline in that, that I have certain times, Lord, that I pick it up and, and everything can wait because you, God, are just more important. Yeah, and good. I want your priorities, God. It's I want your words. heart. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. That'll be our closing prayer this morning. But as you go, I want to remind you, you got homework to do as a family. Sit and talk about this. How are we doing on this? How can we do better? If it's yourself, do some self-reflection. How do I need to do better in this? I love you guys. We'll see you next week right here. God bless.